Hi, so today we are going to cover the abdomen. Um, not a very difficult exam, probably one of the comps that you want to do this semester because it doesn't require a whole lot. Usually it's just one view or sometimes two views, um, but it's easily um, one of those positions that you can get without too much difficulty. Patient prep for this, um, pants, shirt, bra, um, those need to come off. Uh, as far as jewelry goes, no navel rings. Sometimes they have these little kind of chains around their waist. Um, any other piercings around that area need to come off as well. Shoes and socks are okay because we want them walking around the apartment with something on. We don't want them barefoot walking around um, anywhere within the hospital usually. Underwear without any metal snaps, plastic rings are okay. Sometimes uh, women's underwear will have a little plastic piece they're wearing um, a thong or something, then it will show up. So, so occasionally they may have to remove that. Um, anything with denim also needs to come off. Uh, as far as elastic goes, you're going to see some different texts. Um, sometimes leave elastic pants on, but a lot of times it's going to create this little pattern right around the midsection of the body. And because we're looking for kidney stones quite a bit, you usually really want to take those off. KUB is just another term for abdomen. It just means kidneys, ureters, and bladder. So you'll have two kidneys typically, two ureters connecting all the way down in the bladder. The image down here on the right shows kind of an outline of the kidney that you can see on both sides here with the renal pelvis filled with a little bit of uh, contrast so that we can actually see what it looks like. Because normally on an abdomen, you're not going to see um, the bladder hardly at all. You're not going to see the ureters because it blends in with the rest of the body. And the kidneys, you'll be able to actually see the outline of the kidneys, but the contrast makes it much easier to see. As far as breathing goes, you will see some technologists do this on inspiration, simply to push the kidneys down into the abdomen a little bit more. If you think about what we learned in the chest and the lungs becoming inflated, what happens is the diaphragm comes down as well, and that will push the kidneys down into your 14 by 17 field size. Two muscle groups you need to see are the psoas major and the edge kind of of the diaphragm on there. The psoas major has um, an appearance on both sides of the body, kind of a diagonal appearance. The kidneys will follow that shape as well. So you'll actually be able to see how the kidneys are turned because of the presence of this very large muscle on both sides of the body. It's going to be a faint diagonal line that we'll point out uh, during your lab classes on some of the film evaluations. Alimentary canal basically the canal that goes, it's basically a long tube that connects from your mouth all the way down um, to the rectum. Basically when you eat food, it's going to go down in the esophagus and then go into the stomach and small intestines before it goes into the large intestine where it's transferred into waste and then out the body eventually. Uh, we're going to cover a lot of the alimentary canal in the fourth semester, I think, with the floral class, go over the anatomy on that, but we'll point out some of these areas with the um, images that we'll go over um, in class. Um, stomach though, basically where the food goes in, starts to um, get a little bit of absorption, breaks down the food so that it actually prepares it for the small intestine which follows the stomach. Uh, duodenum or duodenum, the very first part of this uh, small intestine, it's going to be this little kind of uh, beige structure right here that you can see. You can also see the pancreas kind of going inside that. This is a pretty fixed structure within the body, so it doesn't change its position very often. It's about 25 centimeters long, so not um, terribly long, of the smallest portion of the actual small intestine. Jejunum, just the second part of it, you can read about it. It's about 8 feet long, um, passes into the ileum, which is the third part um, of the small intestine, which you can see is a representation of what it looks like here with the stomach in this drawing, the duodenum. The, uh, what is it? The jejunum is going to be in the middle section, and then the ileum is going to be the third section. It's eventually going to connect into the colon at this lower right hand point um, in the body. So you want, there's a significant amount of gas within those areas, and we can see problems um, throughout the body. Large intestine. You can go over those separate points, make sure you know the different parts of that, the cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon. The air is going to move around a little bit more in this because it's basically a wider tube, and this is where the feces or stool will be kind of stored within the body and produced um, as it kind of works its way around. 
I'm eventually getting towards the rectum. GI tract uh, just stands for gastrointestinal tract. Uh, we do quite a few studies with this, with the small bowel follow-throughs, as well as the um, BEs or barium enemas that we do. It's just showing some basic anatomy, which we will cover in class as well. But you should see the lowest point of the body should be the symphysis pubis, which is going to be this bony anatomy right down here, just below the bladder. The iliac crest is outlined in eight here. You can actually palpate on this um, on your patients fairly easily. You're going to start at the ASIS, which is the anterior superior iliac spine, and you just kind of go along the lateral portion of the body until you find the crest. Typically, we are going to center right over the crest to get the entire bladder on there and to get the kidneys, which should be in these areas here, just to the lateral borders of the spine. AP abdomen or KB. This is going to be done typically at 40 inches. You do not need to do these at 72 inches because it will fit pretty easily at that distance. You will see some text um, increase the distance a little bit here though just to make it a little easier to fit the kidneys on there. We're going to go a large focal spot because it's a big structure. We're going through a lot of um, tissue and uh, bone so you want to make sure you have a large focal spot on that. Supine position just means laying down on their back. Your orientation of your cassette is going to be 14 inches by 17 inches lengthwise. The longer area is going to be this length here. I know that some places have DR equipment which uses 17 by 17 uh, field sizes, but you should narrow it down, especially if you can see light on either side of the body. 70 to 80 kbp is usually about your range, so smaller range. If you're thin patients, about 70. Bigger patients, you can go up a little bit in your penetrating power. Automatic exposure control will be on the outer cells, but you will see a lot of variance uh, within different clinics. Shielding, you do need to shield for men. It does need to be just below the symphysis pubis. The male testes or sexual organs are going to be just below this point, so if you look at it, it's definitely um, available to be shielded. Uh, women, unfortunately, the ovaries are going to be in the bladder area and kind of overlapping, so we are not going to be allowed to shield women for this exam. Uh, kidneys should be your most superior area here. We'll show some better images of it here. This patient's got a lot of gas, a lot of feces going through here. Uh, symphysis pubis is going to be inferior to what you need to have on there. So that we've got a little bit too much here. We don't really need anything below here. So we could actually have shifted this patient and gotten a little bit more superiorly because we can drop our line to about this area right here. Uh, marker, low outside corner, should be right in this area here. Make sure you are not annotating. Make sure that you do get your marker somewhere in there. Once your positioning gets good, I would suggest to put it up a couple inches just because there's a little bit of a dip in the anatomy here where there's nothing going on. So if you put your, nat or your marker on there, then it will show up. AP upright abdomen or erect abdomen. Um, this is going to be almost the same positioning uh, except for this right here. You're going to center one and a half to two inches above the crest this time. So when you find the iliac crest here, we want to center a little bit above because we want to see the diaphragm now. We want to see the ends of the lungs on there to make sure that we can see the diaphragm going all the way throughout the side. Um, this is going to be able to see any uh, free air. If there's like a little puncture, some free air is going to get trapped underneath the liver and we'll actually be able to see it underneath there. Um, you're going to need a little bit more KVP for this exam because the patient's uh, tissue isn't flattening out like they are when they're lying down. Marker, upright arrow, so make sure you put those both on the right side. You want to keep switching your markers around. It can be done on expiration, but like we talked about with the abdomens, you can do them on inspiration as well. Feet apart, just make sure you center down the mid-sagittal plane. You can tell that this is an upright image because you can see the gas patterns in here, and they are actually squared off. So when a patient is standing, the air is going to rise and the fluid is going to sink. So you'll see multiple straight lines going across the body when we are looking at an erect film versus a supine film. This just shows a decubitus abdomen. So like before, when we talked about the chest decubitus images, this is basically the same thing. We want to get them on their side. We want to see how those air fluid levels kind of layer up um, if any air is getting trapped in one particular spot. Also, do this at 40 inches. You're going to typically do both the left and right um, central ray or CR. It's just going to be really right on the iliac crest again. 
AAS stands for Acute Abdomen Series. All that is is just the three views that you see here, a PHS, an upright abdomen, and a supine um, abdomen as well. Make sure that you do your KUB supine last because we want to adjust for the air, which is normally upright like this because your patients will come walking in typically as opposed to lying down where the gas is going to kind of move around a little bit differently. So like we talked about it should be about five minutes on their back before you go from the upright abdomen to the supine abdomen. Pathology is kidney stones. 90% of them we can see. About 1.2 million patients are treated for renal colic annually. So a lot of patients will come in. One of the first things they look for are kidney stones within the abdomen. So if you get an abdomen x-ray, they're having some uh, blood in their urine or pain in their side or back. Uh, typically, they are going to look for kidney stones first. Free air. We talked about with the arrow here. You can see some of the free air. This is not within the large intestines that you can see here. It looks like air that's escaped into the cavity of the body. So we can see a really, really dense, dark area here. You can see it on this chest x right here as well. Normally, you'll see the gastric bubble over here on the left side. But if you see this over here, typically that means that air is coming up and kind of tucking underneath the lungs because it's in a separate uh, sac. Small bowel obstructions, what we're also looking for is plenty of pathology associated with the abdomen uh, images coming up. You can see the erect images again with the squared off air fluid levels all across the top here, here, right here. This one here, dilated loops of small intestines. So if there's some type of obstruction, what's going to happen is the air is going to back up into the body and the patient will get really distended and a lot of pressure put on the rest of the structures within the abdomen area. Ileus, you can read that up. With this exception, typically we see these on kids, but with this large alimentary canal that we talked about, what will sometimes happen is with the loops of the bowel, occasionally it will kind of telescope on each other and kind of get trapped in here so that when we have a patient drink some barium like this, it just kind of usually goes through the system, but then all of a sudden it'll stop and you'll see the outline kind of where this intussusception is. So this basically needs to be pulled out and unkinked so that the alimentary canal can do its functions. Incidental findings, sometimes they see other things on x-rays just like everything else. Looks like this um, patient has some ongoing pain in their hip as well. It looks like they have some arthritis or disease process in that. So make sure that you can see everything on there. Again, do not annotate your images. Make sure you're using your markers. Foreign bodies, there's a whole host of foreign bodies on here that you can look at. Uh, patients get some abdomen pain by putting some things up their rectum. So for some reason, it always seems to head to the emergency room at some point. Cell phones are popular. Bottles. This patient's got a little hook. It looks like they got stuck here because it looks like they went fishing for the bottle, so occasionally you'll see other things in there as well. Surgical mistakes. Sometimes you have to go to the OR to kind of look for um, instruments. If the instrument can count as incorrectly, you want to make sure that this does not stay within the body because it will create a problem for the patient. Coins, magnets, batteries, we'll see. Um, kids especially are attracted to small circular batteries. Um, unfortunately, um, it does result in death occasionally, so if you suspect that they have a bat they've swall swallowed a battery, then we need to make sure that um, we can see it. It will be metallic, so it will show up as white like it's shown here. Guns, hopefully you do not have this problem, but if you work at the jail, occasionally some suspects will try to sneak in some contraband. And just some miscellaneous things on here. Christmas time, you may see some candy. Um, Keys, you know, you probably should use your pocket instead of that. I don't know why this has a cassette in here. Glasses, again, usually shirt pockets. Toys, you'll occasionally see in there. If you can't make it out, it's uh, from Toy Story. It's the little astronaut guy. And then, of course, sexual instruments on occasion. Uh, hopefully, this gives you a nice rundown of the abdomen. Make sure that you do read over your chapter, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them um, in class.
Good one.